Welcome to this, the 23rd of my weekly presentations on clock restorations and repairs. And this week, it will be a 400 day torsion pendulum clock with a brand name of Sylvester, a very rare clock and with unique characteristics as you will find as we go through this presentation. Way back in 2005, I attended one of Melbourne Clock Club's fantastic national conventions. And I think it was the second day that Ken Day, now deceased, surprised me with an offer that I couldn't refuse. He came up with this movement and its original pendulum for a clock that I had never seen before. It cost me the exchange of a complete running early 1885 clock. But I was so intrigued by this movement that it was ultimately a very sound swap. With a little bit of study on the internet, I found that the word Sylvester in Germany is actually New Year's Eve. But in fact, it's not quite New Year's Eve because St. Sylvester's Day is on December the 31st. So celebrating St. Sylvester's Day now coincides with the Gregorian calendar for our New Year's Eve. Also, it's an indication that being a 400 day clock to be wound once a year, that New Year's Eve would be a very appropriate time to wind your clock. Once a year, New Year's Eve, wind the clock. Hard to forget. Here you can see my task ahead. I have the movement and the pendulum with a perfect dial and the original hands. Complete the clock and I will have to make a base, the columns, platform and the little gallery on top of the movement. At least I don't have to make any of the difficult parts of the clock. Ho ho. This is the company that made the clock. Quite obscure company, Yaris Uhrenfabrik Christian Bauer. And they were in Bavaria in the town of Firth. And here you can see a diagram or a schematic of their factory. And the actual advertising below that indicating that they make Sylvester brand 400 day clocks. Here is the one feature which sets this clock apart from every other 400 day clock ever made. It has a pinwheel escapement with a crab claw pallet system. And here is the original patent issued to Christian Bauer in 1901. And I thought I had a going concern. No chance. Turn the movement around and that beautiful, unique escapement is completely missing. Apart from the pinwheel, of course and a few other bits and pieces like the click work, click spring and the click. But they're easier to replace than a crab claw pallet escapement system. With a little help from my friends, one of who owned one of these unique clocks, I obtained these magnificent photos 
which showed me how the system was fixed and located within the movement and how it operated. So it was from there I was able to create a new system for my clock. Here's more of these very fine photos from which I was able to create a dimensioned drawing of the pallets and its pallet arbor. You'll note that it is a composite system. The arbor has a threaded end and the pallets are put onto the pallet arbor with spaces between them and a little lock nut at the bottom. That giving you adjustment vertically and horizontally to adjust for drop and lock. An excellent little system. A few slides ago, I indicated the shadows that were still visible on the back plate of the movement from where the original components had been screwed and fitted. Well, from those shadows, I was able to create this template for the back bridge, which holds the pallets vertically in the movement. Here are some pictures to show how the pallets are set up and arranged on their little arbor. And also you will notice that the impulse pin is way out behind the clock rather than between the plates. The suspension spring passes down through a hoop and the fork has to face away from the clock to be in contact with that impulse pin. This is all back to front compared to the normal deadbeat escapement system. Having completed the construction of the pallets and its bridge and the click work, I was then able to strip the entire movement down, clean it, polish it and put it into service. Now to make the platform and the columns and the base. And here from the left hand side is the original clock that I was able to get dimensions for. I was able to turn up some posts and the platform along with a few other turnings and decorations and finials. Exactly the same size as the original. I turned up a wooden base, stained it and lacquered it, then fitted my columns and platform to the base. Then I was able to mount the movement and operate the clock on its final resting place. One more decorative item to make, and that's the gallery that sits on top of the movement plates and doesn't just sit on top of the plates, but bridges from front to back as well to form a rectangular gallery. It appears to be dog bones vertically or urns if you look at the solid. So my plan was to make this in brass and I drilled two parallel rows of holes ready then to cut out between the holes and create the dog bones. From that double row of holes, I created a strip of dog bone gallery. And here are four sections cut out to the correct lengths, ready to be assembled. The corners are mitered and then they were soldered together and to each corner a small brass ball has been soldered as well to replicate the original gallery. Here's my gallery fitted to the top of the movement. And I think it looks a very good interpretation of the original, if not better. The project is complete. And here are some views looking down into the clock and all those missing parts have now been replaced and the clock is in excellent condition and 
say on running order. Here's the finished clock compared to the other original clock. And I think Christian Bauer would be very happy to see clock number 15 back in running condition. And number 15 would have to have been in the first couple of days of the first batch of production of these very unique and rare 400 day torsion pendulum clocks. Thanks for watching another of my presentations. I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you're keeping well and we're hoping that we'll be able to all get together for Christmas. If you have any questions or any comments you'd like to make about this presentation, you can send me an email to the address shown in blue at the bottom of this page. Thank you and bye for now.